so I got a little bit later start headed up to Vickers than I had hoped. It was almost three o'clock in the morning by the time I got my video finished up and uploaded out in the shop. But if we want to have any chance of taking this truck anywhere this weekend, I've got to get this transmission up to Dion at Vickers Brothers immediately, if not sooner. So, me and Jun Pup hit the road. I made it to almost Newark before she started doing this little happy dance over there in the passenger seat. That's the I need to potty look. So I pulled off down the speedway on the east side of Newark to let her out to go potty and top the truck off with fuel to make our two and a half hour trip up to Alliance. Unfortunately, unbeknownst to me, State Route 16 is closed and the detour route added almost 45 minutes to the trip going up. The sun was just starting to come up as we rolled into Canton, right past the Football Hall of Fame. I shot a text message over to Dion to see what time he was gonna get up this morning. I figured we might go get breakfast, but unfortunately, I was there about an hour or two early for that, and I really didn't have time to wait around just to have breakfast. So I dropped the transmission off just outside the shop door and me and June Pup turned and burned back west. We stopped at McDonald's and shared a breakfast snad, which evidently June likes to sort everything out, separate the biscuit from the egg and the cheese. Anyway, once we got our breakfast down, we started headed back towards home. And we made it back to the house right around 9.30 in the morning. And Miss Vicky thought she was gonna be cute and come out and interview me in the driveway, thinking she was gonna catch me ready to come in and take a nap. Look who it is. What are you doing? It's 9 a.m. I'm just getting my day started and you... I'm just getting my day started. No, now you need to sleep for a few hours. Yeah. So you left at what, about three in the morning? Yeah. Drove all the way up to Alliance. Yeah. And here you are back. Yeah. You never slept all night. No, and Jeremy's on his way over here in a minute. We gotta pull the alternator off that Falcon so that Billy can take it and match it up and replace it. And I wanna get that belt off of it and go down and see Uncle Mark. So you're not going to take a nap yet? Thank you. <sighs> all right. A few minutes later, my brother rolls in, driving his mobile trash can, as usual. So he comes in and gets started right away, pulling the alternator off this Falcon. Billy and Uncle Rob are on their way here, and I wanted them to take it with them to Jigs. And I plan on taking this belt down to see Mark and see if he can match it up. Well, how was your weekend? No, it was all right. Got to go to good guys one day. Jeremy's still dealing with buying this house and moving, so he hasn't had much time to focus on this 36 Chevy Coupe he's working on. He's looking at maybe getting an aftermarket chassis for it because the original sucks. Well, the 36 Chevys were the original unibody. That's the first time they ever tried a unibody. So the frame rails have no cross members and they're made out of stamped sheet metal. It sounds like you're working on a big pile of junk. It would be the tightest ride that's in this garage by the time I'm done. None of this race car hackery. That sounds like a pretty tall order for a car that had wooden door frames. Whatever. All what right, now look there? here. This is a belt. That is a belt. And I need the exact belt again. Now listen, I got my eye on you. You sent me on the highway to hell with that last generator belt that you sold me. Gonna, we're going to talk about that again. I got to give Mark a little bit of credit. He works with a couple of yahoos down there that I don't know how he does it. Every time I come in there, he's stressed completely out. I told him the other day, those two boys in there with those blue t-shirts on with a round emblem on the front look like thing one and thing two. Mark got quite a kick out of that, but the honest truth is they really do. Listen, you two jackalopes have got to straighten yourselves up. I told him to get shirts made that says thing one and thing two. Yeah, he was telling us about You guys that. are like Dr. Seuss. He's Dr. Seuss and you're the whatever the hell them things were. What he's talking about is just getting these shirts and putting thing one and thing two at the top. <laughs> Mark came up with a belt that he thinks is going to work. And I stuffed three or four cases of motor oil in the trunk of that Malibu and head back to the shop. The trunk's about full. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate, appreciate it. So I come home, take a little shower, take a nap, hand over everything to my associates in the shop. Well, turns out Uncle Bucko says the belt's not right. And right back down to Mark's he goes. What's this? This is, this is the belts I warned you about. Oh. We're playing the belt game again. Now this all transpired while I was taking a cat nap back at the house. I don't know what's going on for sure, but Uncle Rob says this belt is not going to work, and he's tried it before. I'm just saying. 
I did my research because I know how you are. I'm thinking we'll be just fine. So while I've got another belt battle brewing between Jeremy, Mark, and Rob, Kenny and Harley are back at the shop working on my trailer trying to get it cleaned up. And I'm telling you, it's a complete and total disaster. Kenny even serviced the AC unit up on top of it, cleaned all the bugs, cleaned the wheels and tires, and Harley even cleaned up the golf cart. Meanwhile in the shop, Allison's restocking posters and poster tubes, and the boys are busy on the cars. Jeremy's working on this alternator on the Falcon, and Billy's putting the Nova back together. What's the situation status report here, Uncle Buckolius? Well, alternator's back on. Everything's straightened out. And Big Rob's eating crow because the belt fits. Oh! He said, that ain't gonna work. You gotta have a Continental. And Chumpy said, nope, nope, that's what's gonna work. And he said he already sold Rob one of his belts. And Rob said he tried to put it on, it wouldn't fit. And here I am, finishing an argument between two other people. Rob's eating crow, and Chumpy won. So you're Team Chumpy today. Team Chumpy. Except for the wonderful socket set he sold me that what? I had to buy because you threw all your sockets away and we didn't have a 3H, 3H drive, or 5 12.3H drive socket to do the wheels with. I bought Chumpy's $70 wonder socket box, except for when you pick it up, it dumps shit all over. Like, you put it, close it, latch the box, pick it up, and all the sockets fall out of place. Chumpy's getting kicked in the nuts tomorrow. As usual, even on his best day, Mark can't satisfy Uncle Bucko. Vicky brought pizza home for everybody tonight for dinner, and the boys got started working on the Falcon, putting new tires on, and getting this Nova put back together so we can fire it up and check ignition timing. Now, usually we would put slicks on the Falcon, but this time, the boys have decided to run the Falcon in a class called Gangster Street that requires a DOT radial tire. So, this weekend, the Falcon's not going to be running in the same class as the Nova. got the cam sync put back in time and checked ignition timing. Everything sounds good. Everything works fine on the Nova. All right, guys. So good news, bad news. The good news is the Nova is just about ready to go. The bad news is the Falcon still got a problem with the alternator. We put a brand new alternator on it and this one doesn't work at all. The old one at least worked <laughs> up into 7,000 RPM. So tomorrow we got to take the alternator back off the Falcon, go back to Jeg, see if we can get another alternator and uh, see if we can get through that. Uh, as you saw in the video, Junior and Tommy have put radials on the Falcon for this weekend. What's that class called, Billy? Gangster Street. Gangster Street is what we're gonna run the Falcon in. So uh, we're gonna run the Nova and small tire on 29s, right? Yeah. We got a brand new set of Mickeys laying over here on the other side of the shop to put on the Nova for tomorrow. And I guess we're graduating beater bomb. First round. Saturday? Yeah, Saturday. Off the trailer. Yeah. In the shootout. Yeah, he jumped on me. I think he knows that. You know, he wants to put on a good show for the crowd, number one. But I think number two, he knows that I don't have a whole lot of passes on the car. So. Right. It's typical. There's, You're going to have people jumping on you because they know the car is new and we don't have many runs on it. And if there's a time to jump on you, it's right now before you get it figured out. And so. That's all right, though. So we're going to run Beater Bomb first round off the trailer on Saturday with the Nova. And the Falcon's going to be in Gangster Street. Um, we still got a lot of work to do tomorrow. Uh, I need to get the Suburban oil changed and the differential on the rear of it serviced tomorrow. We still got to swap tires on the Nova. And I think Billy's going to get down. Are you going down to your shop and get those RC comps off the S10 to put on the back of the Nova? Yeah, they look like they're a little wider, so I'm going to put them, put them on the 29, spread them out as much as I can. Okay. So that's on the agenda for tomorrow. I'm not going to need a whole lot of sidewall for that track. It's going to you know, be better off if you spread them out wider. Right, right. So this track, track we're going track, to is... Less sidewall you need. Yeah, so this track we're going to in the Ozarks. What, what's the name of this track? Ozark Raceway Park. Ozark Raceway Park in Missouri. It's a pretty good track, I guess, so... Uh, 
we're going to be leaning on these things pretty hard. That's kind of the reason we wanted to put Tommy's Falcon and Gangster Street on a radial because it has a better chance on a radial uh, in Gangster Street class than it does trying to run with stuff Brick like that Nova. And, and Peter Bomb and yeah, the big dogs. So. Boosted and whoever else. Boosted's coming? Up. I don't know. You oh, might. All right, well. Everybody I else seems like they're showing up. <laughs> so we're going to be out there. Um, we'll do the best we can with what we got and see how things shake out. But um, we've still got a lot of work to get done. Uh, Kenny did a really good job today on the trailer. He and Harley attacked my trailer and the golf cart. I mean, that thing is spotless, front to back, top to bottom. And Harley's got the inside of it all cleaned up. The living quarters area is all swept out, cleaned, and the bedding's pulled out of it, and it's in the wash. So that's all good. Those Kenny and Harley have been a huge help today really big help today uh god and then tomorrow uh i think somebody's got to run up to dion's and go get billy's transmission because it should be done tomorrow afternoon and uh we'll see if we can't get the truck put back together just in case we run into some kind of snag with the falcon we can uh, we can always throw the s10 on the trailer and take it out there instead and run it in gangster street because it fits the class also i feel bad for the Truck yeah. It's gonna be, it's gonna be sad just sitting there when we're out on the road for a week or so. It's usually it usually goes on every big trip we, we do. Yeah. But we've only got so many vehicles and trailers and drivers. Tommy's never driven the, the truck before. He's feels comfortable on the Falcon, so I gotta tell you it's been really nice not having to <clears throat> worry about a carburetor. Um the carburetor doesn't have any fail-safe. It runs until its little heart explodes or the heart below it explodes. And I have to rely on feedback from the driver. And if, if I'm not driving a car, I have to learn to rely on my ears and try to hear it and listen and uh, feedback from Billy or Tommy or whoever's driving. And it's a lot of stress. And I haven't really understood how much stress that is until recently when we go out of town racing and neither one of the cars have a carburetor on. I don't have to worry about it. Like the ECM does my job. So, or <laughs> pretty much does my job. You know, uh, the kids are doing really good at tuning. Billy's learning really fast. I'm really proud of him. You know, I mentioned that in my video last night. Um, it's unbelievable how well that car runs right off the bat. You know, three events in, we've already won ten grand with it. So it's all good. We'll see Definitely how things go. Easy. No, it's not easy. Although we, the you know, ECM doesn't just do everything. Right. I gotta tell it what to do. Yeah, yeah. So really, really impressed with him and and how well he's adapting. Uh, you know, last year at this time, I probably wouldn't have let him tune my garden tractor, but he's doing a really good damn job with that car. I mean, really good. He's, I don't know what the heck got into you, but boy, I tell you what, he's really picked up on it. He's on computer watching videos every single day from what, Steve Morris and... Yeah, I, was, I watched a little bit of everything. Steve Morris, Devin Vanderhoof, mm -hmm. um, anybody who's fast. I watch all Chiefs videos and he, he helps me out, you know. Mm -hmm. He sends me some, some stuff every once in a while. Yep. And we're very thankful for... Justin and all the videos from Steve Morris and everybody online. So that's going to about do it for tonight, guys. I'm pretty tired. I'm going to try and go in, get this video finished up and get it uploaded, get some sleep and get back at it tomorrow. So good night, everybody. See you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.